I am amazed at how our needs do not seem to end. So you meet a young boy in, say, secondary school, and the need of that person and his desire, his craving, his prayer, and even his frustration comes from the desire to probably finish secondary school, write his exams, pass jam, and you see the gentleman depressed, and you tell him, what is the source of this depression? And he says, this jam, I want to pass it. Now, you ask one who is already in the higher institution of learning, and his desire is to pass his exams, defend his project, and graduate and then the one who graduates will tell you i want to go further i'm trying to secure a scholarship to go for masters or phd and all of that and you ask a young man he will tell you my desire now is to marry her desire now is to marry you ask the one who is married they tell you the devil is a liar i must have children <laughs> are we together then the one who has children their desires change and they tell you thank god for girls but i think we need to add boys to this list and the, dep the same depression the person had when he was small has been changing or remaining the same using different different needs and then you ask the one who um is staying with his parents and his desire and frustration is i'm no longer a child i need to get out of this house then he gets out and smuggles himself to a small room and after a while his desire is to have a bigger house then he gets tired of being a tenant and he will tell you my new desire the source of this my frustration and wrinkling my face is that i want to start building You ask the one who now has children and their desire is to have these children grow and become responsible. 10, 11 years later, same frustration. But now the basis for that frustration is I didn't realize having so many children would require so much money for fees. That becomes another journey. Later you ask them and they say, I can't imagine that I suffered and went through this only to give birth to a foolish child. This child is 18 years old and I almost regret giving birth to this child. And remember, the same person, look at all the various transitions, same frustration. Then you ask the one who gets a job and is happy, gives testimony six months later. He's saying, I don't understand this. What kind of failure is this? Um, I, I didn't offend anybody. This is an office. I rejoice. It came by prophecy. I need promotion. Same frustration. Hmm. Pay attention. And then you find one who has gotten the job and the promotion. Now the promotion causes trouble between the couple because now their salaries are similar and it looks like the man is saying, so now that God has lifted you, another frustration that has come as a result of that lifting. And then the frustration would soon change when they go to the hospital and they say, it looks like there is a lump or a growth in your body. How old are you? I'm 55. We are suspecting prostrate. All of a sudden, the prostration that was there when he was young now returns, but a different reason is the sponsor. So I'm going to die. You would think that with all of the achievements, the frustrations should diminish. You would go to the house of a very wealthy man and turn left and right and see everything you desire and aspire for and yet that man is still looking for something and you're asking what are you still looking for and the man will say something like i can give up all these things you see for what i am looking for and he's still frustrated remember when he made his first million remember when he made his first billion he thought it would give him that peace and satisfaction and even in the midst of plenty remember the first time the man boarded a flight coming from a background of penury and poverty he was happy and smiling now he may probably have his own private charter or his private jet and in the midst of it there is still that frustration how about those who hang and write letters with billions piled in their accounts and shoot themselves or hang themselves as painful as death is that a state can come in a man's life where it seems better to die than to live are we still together how about a young preacher on campus 
catching the fire praying for eight hours praying for nine hours learning about greek and hebrew as a new experience and my goodness this gentleman is now beginning to step into some kind of dimension of grace now they invite him for small fellowships and the power of god is moving this young man is rediscovering a whole new world about his destiny happy and excited for a while then campus days are over then he desires to start ministry another frustration comes where do i get venue where do i get money and then he starts ministry 30 years later he's angry frustrated looks back and he does not even know whether he was called or not <laughs> what are we really looking for please i want you to listen to this message the lord put it in my heart to share for the terrorists or one who would stand and kill people and rob a bank and rob people what are they really looking for for the preacher who has a large congregation and yet continues to pray and say god give me increase what are we really looking for for the one who has successful children all graduates all successful all working and they still have prayer requests what are they looking for the one who just made his first billion in dollars and is still looking for something still submitting proposals from state to state nation to nation region to region fighting and arguing over wars fighting and arguing over um contracts what is he looking for for the man of God who has been in the faith, working with God for 40 years, and he's still fasting and praying, what is he looking for? For one who has seen the power of God move in his life in uncommon, unimaginable dimensions, what is he looking for? You will thank me for the message that you are hearing tonight. This message will give your life meaning. It will give your life perspective. And indeed, it will give you peace. Are we learning? 